Welcome to The Passion Pod with your host, Chris Johnson. Thanks for joining us. Now sit back, relax, and enjoy the feature presentation. Welcome back, friends. Today, we're chilling in my dining room, Studio P, if that's what it's called, Studio Passion. I don't know. This is my dining room, and I'm welcoming a guest who I didn't even know lived in L.A., so thank you so much for coming back to the Midwest. He's known for his instrumental music, producing for a bunch of different people. He's in town to do a record signing, which you're going to miss if you're just watching this, so hopefully you actually went to it. <laughs> Welcome to the show, Shrimp Nose. Hey, how's it going? Dude, where'd you get your chain? And it, Did you break it and glue it back together? Yeah, sure did. <laughs> Many <laughs> times. <laughs> Um, it was a gift from a fan a couple years. Well, not, I shouldn't say a fan. Somebody I, I know that used to throw shows in Duluth gotcha. a couple years ago. And I, they got it from a glass blower in Minneapolis that works at Legacy. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, yeah, it was just a gift. They, they got it and we're like, I think you need this. <laughs> Are you ever going to get another, like a replica made that's not broken? You could do a gold one. I should, yeah. I would like to get like a. Nice, you should have different variations, you know right? Depending mean? on the show. Yeah, yeah. You could have some some bling. So, what are we doing in Eau Claire? Why are you here? Besides this, I mean, this is the real reason. But other than this, why are you in Eau Claire? Um, I'm playing a show tonight at Abraxas. Oh um, shit! Yep, should be should be fun. I got some merch and whatnot. Um, I'm playing with sl- sl- Slow Sly Love and Lesh. Uh, Slow Sly Love, I've known for a while. We're both. Uh, we. We, we were both active in the scene in Minneapolis for a while. I kind of stepped away a little bit, um, just not living there anymore. Yeah. But um, yeah, I'm I, I'm excited to play. Dude, he rips on a skateboard. I don't know if you knew that. but Really? He, yeah. So I own the skateboard shop in town, Passion yeah. Board Shop. That'll turn 10 in April. Woo! Nice. Um, but growing up, there's a shop called Underloud, and that was like the shop that I hung around at, and he yeah. rode for that shop. So really? if you look up Underloud Eau Claire skateboarding, they made a full length video at one point in time, and he has a full part in it. I think he might have the opener. Really? Yeah. Oh my god! And he I didn't know really that. good. Yeah, did, he doesn't tell no anybody idea. about it. Of but course, yeah. <laughs> dude. Yeah, he used to uh, rip, and I've known Lesh for quite a while. They are like incredible with the scene. They they DJ so many shows and so many just events that like don't even have their name on it. Yeah. Um, but everyone in Eau Claire knows Lesh. So that'll be cool. How'd you get a hold of, or how did Abraxas get a hold of you? What do you know about Abraxas even? Because that's like a brand new business, right? It's like a couple months old or something. Yeah, I think they, um, when I announced my tour, I think they saw it and just reached out, honestly. They oh, just cool. thought it would have been a good fit. Um, I met the dude a couple of weeks ago at the in Minneapolis at the Yusuf Today's show. Seth, you're talking about? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, cool. Yep. Uh, uh, yeah, I met Seth there. Um, he was like, hey, man, you're going to play my show in a week or two. Sick. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, cool. it was cool. So you're from Minneapolis or what part of Minnesota are you from? Buffalo originally. Where's so, Buffalo? About an hour west from there. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah so sort you're out like, in the sticks. When did you move to the big city and why did you move there? Um, I, so I went to North, North Hennepin for... About two years, I think. I, dr- I drove there every day. And I just c- got kind of sick of the hour d- d- drive t- to school every day. And I really wanted to go to the U, U-, the U-, U-, U of M. Um, I was a s- s- psychology and sp- 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 Spanish m- major. Yeah. And it's a really good s- 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 psychology school so oh sure yeah I, I i wanted to go there and i went didn't make any friends i did pr- pretty good in school i just yeah. didn't like the atmosphere really sure. and at the same time i was uh kind of getting more obsessed with producing and stuff and i just wanted to devote my time to sure. that what was your first like intro into music you were you making beats on a computer when you were in middle school because like These types of programs have now, at this point, been around a really long time. Like, if you go back to, like, 30 years ago, you couldn't do that unless you had a ton of money. Yeah, right. But even, like, when I... I'm 33, and when I was in middle school, I think, it was I was, like, 13 when YouTube came out. Mm -hmm. But really, it was around that time frame that it was just that boom of all of a sudden, everything was available to you. So, in high school, I knew a lot of kids that were already playing around with music. What what was your experience like? Um, My dad got me a drum set when I was four years old. Did he regret that? 
<laughs> um, well, he, he and my m- mom are in a b- 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 band as well. So oh, cool. my whole life, I grew, just grew, grew, grew up around it. What kind of music was that? And do they still play? Yeah, yeah. Oh, what are the, what's the band? It's the, 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 the Everett Smithson band. I think I've heard of them before. Really? Yeah, I think they, so. They play a lot it's in like the area. Folk kind of. Yeah, like yeah, okay. folk blues. Yeah, just like American. Yeah, because I covered Blue Ox before that music oh, cool. festival, yeah. and I think I'm not saying they perform there, but I think I've seen their name pop up via all of our mutual friends nice. or something. Anyways, continue. Nice. Um, yeah. So in elementary school, I took lessons for a couple years just to try to like learn the right way, and then I kind of from there, I just t- I taught myself. I, okay was a big me- me- metalhead. Yeah. So I I learned to play the songs I liked to learn how to play. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. What metal bands? And did you like Google how to play them? Or like how did you figure, did you watch videos and then try to copy it? Or would, how'd you learn that? I, um, I w- would mainly just like take what I learned in my lessons and try to play along to songs. Oh, and sure. like, you know what I mean? I could hear yeah. what was what was happening. So sure. I would try to... Yeah, there's only so many notes, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah right. okay. Um, Gojira was probably my favorite band. Sick. They're, Heard of they're, them. they're still probably my favorite, like, m- metal band. Okay. Uh, Mastodon, Lamb of God. Sure. Yeah, all, all, all that kind of stuff. Some of the really big ones. What was the first show you remember going to? Gojira, Lamb of God, Metallica. How, the, how old were you? It's like 13, maybe. Oh, cool. <laughs> yeah. Who'd you go with? Did your parents bring you that? My good friend, Cedric, and his dad brought me there. Oh, cool. And your parents were like, yeah, you can go to a metal show. Because yeah. those things get rowdy, don't they? Yeah, I mean, it was the Target Center, so it could only get so rowdy. You I know? suppose. Sure. Yeah. So when did you start making... How did you develop into the sound you make? That's, I mean, right now we're talking about a huge time frame from metal to you make, like, for the most part, in- instrumental, like, chill hop and everything in between. But... When did you start making more instrumental stuff that was, I assume most of what you make is digital, right? Like on a computer or no? Yeah. Well, I mean, I record all the instrument, all, oh, okay. all, all the instruments. Yeah. Um, I taught myself how to play guitar and piano and bass in like middle school, high school. Okay. And kind of just been playing ever since. Sure. Um, I play upside down. I'm, I'm a lefty, so I just, oh. I don't restring it or anything. I just flip it upside down, which is a little weird. Yeah. But um, yeah, I, I. These days I record basically all, all the live instrumentation by myself. Um, yeah. My sound is mainly just like re- 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 recorded. Yeah. Like samp- samples that I, I make and yeah. some synthesis, but sure. not, not a ton. Sure. Where were you at music wise? So you went to college at the U of M and you just didn't really find your people there necessarily what made you then stay in minneapolis and how did you kind of find your people there because you must have found people otherwise you wouldn't have stayed yeah um bobby raps through a beat battle in like 2014 i think oh, okay. at, at the red sea sick and i met like legitimately all of my friends there like still to this day like th- like my friend jlap i was in a group called cram with him a couple years ago um my friend fib he does like all my co- co- cover art um, a few others. Yeah. It was that, that specific night was a pretty instrumental moment in my life. Weirdly enough. <laughs> sure. Where, what kind of music were you making at that point? Were you already making music that was similar and that's what attracted you to want to go to that show? Similar, just much less fleshed out. Oh, okay. Just just a worse, a worse version. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So then you met Bobby Raps and all these other people. What was the first song that you made with that friend group? Was it with Bobby or what was like, how did you start working with them? I think it was Cram. Um, so I met Jordan that night and this other dude, t- 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 Ty P, that p- passed away a few years ago. Um, I met him maybe a couple months later, s- s- separately from Jordan. And um, they had met and were like kind of working together. And I was working with Jordan a little bit. And then we all kind of just like sure made it happen one day. Sure. When did the shrimp nose name come to be? I've heard that name like randomly quite a while, for a long time. Like cool. you, you've been nice. around, you know, <laughs> kind of like underground, but you've been around for a long time. When did shrimp nose become a thing? Um, it, before I had a name, probably like 2014 or so, like right before that beat battle, I think. 
Um, so did you introduce yourself as Shrimp Notes to all those people? Uh, yeah, I think so. <laughs> 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 it was a new cool. name, and I was like, hello, yes, I'm Shrimp I'm going with it. <laughs> yeah. I, um, and how'd you get that name? Uh, my friend Brandon uh, from high school, he's just like kind of an interesting guy. He says eccentric things. His brain works in a different way. You know what yeah. I mean? Um, and I was going to re- record a sample of him to just p- put into a song. Yeah. And out of nowhere, he screams, Shrimp Nose! <laughs> cool. Yeah, I liked it immediately. I, I heard yeah. it, and I was like, oh, that's something. <laughs> yeah, you just knew that was going to be it. I mean, if you could pick something that's relatively short that literally nobody else has, yeah. that's like, just from a branding standpoint, kind of the move. Yeah. Like, I don't know if you're familiar with the artist Neckface. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Same thing. Yeah. Neckface is kind of a ridiculous name. Like, I don't want to call it stupid, but it doesn't make any sense. Like, why, was that, why would that be the name? Yeah. But I remember listening to an interview with him, and he's like, who else would go by that name? Right. No one. Right. It's like, <laughs> I it's mean, true, though. very true. And now he's like an icon. Yeah. I mean, he had a shoe come out with Nike not long ago. Whoa. Anyone who doesn't know Neckface, he's a very well-known uh, graffiti artist who first kind of grew a name in New York, but he's been in California now for a very long time. Does stuff with Baker and Supreme and Nike, mm. a ton of people. So if you need to see some crazy art, Neckface has moved. So Shrimp Nose, you didn't make any music as just Shrimp Nose. It was Creme first, and Shrimp Nose was one part of it, or how did that work? I made some stuff alone. Um, Cram was a big focus. Um, the first couple years, I took it seriously. Is um, that C-R-A-M, Cram? Yeah. Oh, okay, okay yeah. sorry. Yeah. No, all good. Um, yeah, Cram was a pretty big f- f- focus for a couple years, um, and then Ty passed away in 2019, and he was kind of like the glue of the group. Sure. You know what I mean? He kind of like just made it all make sense yeah um we tried to like make it work without him um but yeah it just you know what i mean it was tough yeah that's too bad how long like how much music did you guys put out as a group is there like a whole bunch of albums 150 songs like how much music is there i don't know if it's quite 150 (laughs) we did a couple albums though okay cool. probably 70 i might be overestimating a little bit but did you put out all the music specifically on albums or were there a lot of singles and stuff was there like a lot of soundcloud time frame like what did that look like there was a lot of like loose soundcloud stuff a lot of singles a lot of i remember ty had this idea to do a song every friday for a couple weeks and that ended up working out really well actually really (laughs) yeah dang that's a lot of music i know there's a lot of people that have jumped on trends like that just to like try to have some excuse to be consistent yeah sometimes like it's hard to push creativity, like, because I've talked to a lot of people about where they get their creativity juices from. And you can't force it, but you can encourage it. Yeah. You course, know, and course. by putting, sometimes putting a box around it, such as like a timeline or limiting to certain instruments or whatever, sometimes just having a starting point is all it really takes. And it makes it way easier than if you had to start from nothing. Yeah. No, absolutely. You're going to have to be able to stay like focused. So I'm going to give you a gift of coffee. Can I give you a gift of coffee? Yes, please. <laughs> no. Do you know Minimum Wage Tims? I don't. Okay, well, he's from Minneapolis, actually. Oh, cool. Um, he plays music out there, but he went to UWC. Nice. And he's got a coffee company called Minimum Wage Tims. Nice. So you can go to minimumwagetims.com. He's got a ton of different coffee from all over the place. It's like a boutique brand. You can use a po- uh, the promo code PASSION, and it gives you free shipping, I think. Um, and he does different, like, you know, monthly subscriptions and stuff. But there's all kinds of good ones. So that's my last big bag. I was going to drink it, but now you get to have it. Much appreciated. Oh, it smells really good. Yeah. Minimum yeah. wage tins, guys. Um, also, I know you don't drink before a show, but you'll appreciate this can artwork. So that's also a gift for you. Nice. Mullet Man. That's by Hop and Barrel, which is a brewery in Hudson. Oh, cool. Yeah, dude. They've had my back since, like... I don't even know the first or second season of the show. Oh, wow! yeah. Like Justin's the homie. He's the owner. And I, I've been down with them forever, but they came out with that beer not long ago. And the, the artwork is just the best thing ever. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm stoked on that. Well, anyways, let's continue. So you put out all that music. At what point did you decide you wanted to get to LA? Was that more recently or when did that happen? I've been there for about five years now, basically right after Ty passed away. Well, I had moved there before he passed away as an excuse as an excuse to try to lay a foundation for us all to, you know what I mean? Oh yeah. Okay. But he passed away and then, um, I took the solo thing a little more seriously. Yeah. Okay. Um, there is most of the artists I grew up listening to, like at least in the electronic world are from there. Um, Shlomo flying Lotus, all, yeah. all these guys that I've been looking up to for a long time. Um, yeah. so I, I wanted to, you know what I mean? Just try to 
connect with the scene that I appreciate. <laughs> yeah. It's hard to like jump and move your whole life across country. Dude, I did it on f 500 bucks. It was, it was crazy. It Tell was me crazy. more of the story of that. Did you just move into somebody's closet? Did you look on Craigslist for something? Did you have a job lined up? Like that there's, it is hard to do that because around here, you know, a million people that say they're gonna. Yeah. And no one does. Yeah. You know, how did you make it work? Um, I moved out there with a buddy of mine at the time and uh, we like subletted this house and um, he covered the d d deposit um, and we were there for about a month and when we moved out uh, to find a more permanent place we just didn't get our deposit back they just oh. like <laughs> stole $2,500 from him <laughs> Whoa! yeah it was, that was a whole nightmare and then we moved into my friend's dad's house that was like in the middle of some repairs. Yeah. So that the bathroom wasn't working, the heat and air didn't work. It yeah. was just, you know, it was rough that first year. <laughs> sure. Yeah. But I mean, that's what it takes to get out there, man. Yeah. Like if you really want to make it happen, like that's just how it works. You got to yeah. be willing to sacrifice all these people see successful individuals. A lot of people I've interviewed and they think like it was just handed to them. Like they just had a big break. They blew up on something and immediately everything's working. It's like, nah, dude, you just saw the moment they blew up. Yeah. But there's like so much that led up to that. So how did you build a, a name out there? Cause it's just you and your friend. Nobody cares about two kids from minnesota right did you go to a show that you saw and then made a bunch of friends in one night or how did you kind of like build that um so there's a label out there the realm of doom um they release with a bunch of artists i've looked up to for a long time and wiley the dude that runs it um has always been super cool i think we had a mutual friend connect us and uh i did a release through him and he, he's pretty established out there and you know what I mean is just a part of this the scene that I listen to yeah okay um so that was a pretty big for, 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 for first way to to introduce myself I played a low-end theory night out there okay if, if you know what that is it was like no. it was a weekly night every Wednesday um they would pack it out every week. It's where all the like beat people would play fl 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 fly low and Shlomo and um, Daedalus and mind design. Just all the, all the people I've looked up to for a long time. Um, so I got to play one of those before it closed, which also was a big thing for me at the time. Um, and then I connected with friends of friends, the label that Shlomo has been on for a while. And uh, I've been with them for the last handful of years. How does it look putting out music with them? For one, how did you convince them to take a chance and be like, yeah, you should just be on this? And two, what does it actually look like? Is it you, is them, is it just them organizing and saying, okay, this is the dollar amount it's going to cost to be able to do something, but we'll like line everything up for you? Or do they do it and then they take royalties of something? Or like, I don't even know how that really works. It's all a very collaborative you know, like I'll I'll send him a batch of songs, get his thoughts, maybe tw tweak or change or add more. And yeah, um, it's funny. I I sent him d d d d d d demos for years before he approved anything. Oh, okay. <laughs> I had to just like keep at it and honestly just improve. You, you, yeah. you know, I just had to like get better. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, a lot of it too, though, is like people, they want to work with people that they like and that they know are going to work as hard as them. Yeah. So even if you gave him something that was good, he probably gets a lot of good stuff. Yeah. But by consistently coming at it over and over and over again, that showed him something else about you that not only are you good, but you're willing to do the work. Yeah. And that means a lot for people because people can be molded and they can be helped and they can be lifted up. People have innate talents. They just have to be able to work towards them. Right. A lot of people aren't willing to work towards them. Right. So you being able to do that is a, is a pretty big deal. I mean, man, if I wasn't doing this, I don't know what I would be doing. It's the only thing I know how to do well, you know? Sure. Yeah, 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 for real. What happens when you put out uh, an album? Because it's not like albums go on sale and you make money from them. Nowadays, it's more like, I mean, you sell them, I'm sure. But like, I think that's more just an establishing yourself situation where it shows in your resume of like, this is what's out publicly about me. But that's not really how people make money. They make yeah. them from shows and different things, but you play the kind of music that isn't usually the type of thing that would like attract a ton of people to see live, right? Because you're not singing and stuff. Yeah. So what does it look like? It's kind of weird. For sh for shows, I tend to make a little more like 
dubstep oriented, like just like more exciting stuff. But it depends on the show very much so. If it's if I'm opening for somebody that's a little more in my lane, yeah. I'll go on the more chill side of things. Sure. Um but it's kind of like a DJ situation in that way. For, for the most part, yeah. I would yeah, love okay. to I would love to introduce some more l- live elements. Yeah. I've p- 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 played dr- drums over a few sets but very few and far between gotcha yeah i'm excited to see what you uh what you do tonight what is the show gonna look like at abraxas are you gonna be playing the guitar upside down like are you (laughs) not tonight not tonight yeah what what can people expect to see tonight but in general if they're gonna go to a show in the midwest what can they generally expect um all originals um every kind of vibe you could imagine i try to just like hit every genre that i like listening to yeah i you know what I mean? I try to have my music be tied together and be cohesive by something that isn't one genre necessarily. I okay. try to kind of like hit every mark. That sure. I like. What do you get? Try to get out of the audience? Is it more trying to create a dancey kind of vibe, or like what? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. I'd say so. What's the most memorable you've show you've played this last year? Honestly, a couple nights ago we sold out. I've been. Street entry yeah okay so first abs like secondary yeah. yep. like spot cool yeah it was my first uh headline i sold out ever so that was really that was pretty exciting that's a good one to sell out yeah sick dude yeah. i'm sure like spending any time in minneapolis growing up that's like a i guess i was there for the first time ever recently but that's like an, a very iconic venue not that seventh street or first avenue for that matter are like massive spaces yeah but they're just like like iconic everyone in minneapolis knows about them how did that show line up did you have like some people from your team reach out did you do all the work for it how does that get put together when you live in la uh i've played there uh, many times over the years probably 10 or 15 times sure um so i have a good relationship with the people that work there um and yeah i think me and my team both reached out as we were setting up the tour to make sure that i had like a good hometown yeah release show sure what's the tour like right now how many places are you going like what how many what's the number and what area of the country are you doing is it all in like a van or like how are you <laughs> how are you doing tour um it's been kind of all over the place i think it's been like 15 or 16 total dates um next week i'm going to dc and then b- 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 boston and worcester worcester is just a little town outside of boston <laughs> sure are you like right in the middle is this like number eight or like what show are we at? I think the f- first half show the other day was 10 or 11. Oh, so you're towards the end. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. We played so far. We've done New York, Chicago, Denver, Portland, San Francisco, LA, Fargo, Minneapolis, and then tonight, Eau Claire. D.C., Boston, Worcester, and New York. Again. So how does Eau Claire get on that list? We're like listing a bunch of major <laughs> cities in the, in the whole country. Eau Claire is dope. Don't get me wrong. There's a reason I live here. But like, it's not a big music city. Yeah, like the, for the area, people like it's known, I guess, for music a bit. But yeah. like I, not, people from L.A. don't come here a, a whole lot to perform. I know you're not from L.A., but yeah, even yeah. so. Yeah, I don't know. Seth just reached out and he's a really nice guy, easy to work with and cool. wanted to make it happen and i was in in the area already so it wasn't like they had to fly me in or anything sure yeah which, see that's how nice. we get in in case anyone ever wonders in eau claire like how do we get these people the secret is we get people not on a weekend yeah i mean i know it's weekend right now yeah. but generally speaking like we get people like we have comedians all the time we just had sam talent here we've had oh, dina cool. hashem here yeah i got to interview both of them which is nice. dope Whoa. um and then we have sean Patton, who's coming next week which i'm interviewing him before his show but we just catch them when they're like going from milwaukee to Minneapolis or Madison, well, you know, whatever, when they're coming through yeah. and Colin Ryan, the station manager for uh, Converge, as well as he like organizes a lot of different events in Eau Claire, especially at the plus, he does a lot of their stuff. I think probably all their stuff, but he reaches out when he sees these tours and goes, looks like you have a day off in the middle. <laughs> Why don't you come What's on? What's it going to cost? <laughs> you, it looks, you probably weren't busy. So, yeah. so we're able to get like a lot of, it's just about being savvy. Yeah, you know what I mean? But right. we're able to get like a lot of people. So, this album tell me about this album what like how many tracks is it how long did you work on it what's the general vibe who'd you make it for give me some info about it um yeah so this is my first pr- pr- project where i uh i sing i sing a little bit i'm singing on a, a good cool. a, a good handful of these songs um i got really big into uh 
I started listening to a lot more like folk songwriter stuff, like Elliot Smith, Alex G, sort of stuff. Um, and I wanted to make a record that's hitting that vibe, but through the <laughs> that vibe. You know what I mean? It's just doing that, but through the lens of like an electronic producer. So cool. um, it was very much so for me. It was like me. Uh, I felt like I had something to say for the first time. You know, I had always wanted to record, but I didn't feel the urge to write lyrics that made me feel good. <laughs> sure. Or I felt proud of, but I felt like I had something to say. I had a crazy few years. I lost a bunch of weight, a bunch of like personal transformation kind of stuff, leaving old things in the past, moving forward. You know what I mean? Just yeah. all that. And I wanted to kind of say what I had to say on record. <laughs> and kind of like a inspiration for other people kind of a way? Yeah. Or cool. Yeah, yeah. So it's not all totally inspirational. You know, sure, some yeah, of it's yeah. like... But sharing your experience helps with other people. Yeah, 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 yeah. Cool. So, I mean, I have to ask, just because people who have deal with speech impediments in general doing singing seems like really difficult to do oddly enough singing is there's something to do with the brain where if you sing you just, just won't happen is it because you memorize the lyrics and it's like it, premeditated or like it's not even that i don't know entirely the science behind it but i think when we're speaking we're trying to decide on the spot what to say you know yeah, what i mean we're trying yeah, to like sure. anticipate what we're about to say but if you're singing you n you know what you're supposed to sure you know what i mean even yeah. if you're like like i'm freestyling right now you know yeah. what i mean like it still ends up being huh yeah i guess i mean i've interviewed a ton of people at this point and it's i've it's funny how i guess i assumed anybody who does a career vocally would just be very clear with the way that they speak you yeah. know what I mean? Like they would enunciate very clearly. They'd be very straightforward. That's not the case. Yeah. You know what I mean? I like my favorite rapper. His name's Sun Real. He's from Vancouver. You got to check him out. And I keep shouting him out on the show because he let me interview him backstage not long ago, which was like the dopest night ever. Oh, um, nice. But he came up as a rapper and now he does a lot of folk singing. Oh, but cool. It's, so it's like a hip hop oh, folk, but then like also that. rap tracks. Right. That's what I was thinking. Like, I think, I think you would like it. But I interviewed him and it was like, wow, you are not that clear of a speaker at all. Yeah. Even though he's a beautiful singer, yeah. like he's a great rapper. I'm like, huh? Yeah. I guess everyone just has like totally different skills in the way, like when they're focused on one thing, like that works, but not necessarily everything in that realm works the same way. Yeah. So I, I, just interesting. Cause I was wondering if that was one of the reasons that you never sang in general in the past. Um, yeah, I think subconsciously it was like a barrier just cause I like talking on the mic can be kind of weird. Yeah. And sure. I feel like being a vocalist inherently involves a lot of, it's talking like on the mic speaking. yeah but yeah i just decided to fucking get over it yeah. <laughs> you know like i'm yeah. still gonna do it but right it's just my life you know what i mean sure. i gotta accept it there's plenty of people that have had very successful career like james earl jones for example sure. he he used to have one i think he was still did he pass away james i'm earl not jones? sure yeah um i know he is like a famous person known for his voice specifically yeah and he he had one yeah. What was the first show that you play that you sang? Um, I, I, I don't sing live. You yet. haven't yet? I, I'm doing the like DJ playing me singing on my computer. <laughs> you know what I mean? Sure. I'm just still, I'm just not good enough of a singer to like feel confident. Well, I'm mean, not, not even involving my speech, just yeah. like literally my voice right, sure. kind of sucks. <laughs> Dude, no, you're going to get there. You're going to, you're going to watch Lesh today. Have you played with Lesh before? Uh -uh. Have you seen Lesh perform? Uh -uh. Okay, you're gonna you're gonna play with Lesh today, and you're gonna see them like singing over music they play. Cool. Um, at least I would assume they will on some of what they play tonight, because they typically do, and it's gonna inspire you. Oh, cool. And then, and then you're gonna want to. What's the the most recent um, band or musician or in general like music you have found that's been inspirational to you? That's a great question. Um, honestly, it's it's. I was already very familiar, but Justin Ver 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 Fernan's new solo project from this summer was like incredible. Probably sure. my favorite thing that I've heard all year. Why was it your favorite one? Cause it like, I'm a huge fan of his more electronic sound as of late, but okay. this project, his solo project was a lot more stri like stri stripped back. Yeah. Um, which I felt like was a nice re refreshing side uh, to to hear from him yeah is he are they done making music as bony there 
I don't think so. Oh, okay. But, I just heard rumors that he played a show not crazy long ago, and I guess he stopped it mid-show because he was crying about, like physically crying because it was like the end of an era of some kind of way. So that's rumor that I had heard, but I don't know if there's truth to that or not. I saw him play in Duluth. That's the show this, I thought I was talking about. This summer, about. and that did happen. He stopped yeah. and cried, but I don't think he mentioned it being like... Sure. A- end of the band. Sure. I think... I, it was just like personal lyric yeah, okay. stuff getting to him. I yeah. might be wrong though, you know. Dude, if your music touches you after how many times you've performed that song and played yeah. it in general, if it still touches you enough to make you cry, it must yeah. mean something. So I guess we all need to go check out that album. Dude, that was probably my favorite live show I've ever seen. He's, really? He somehow sounded better live than he does on recording. His Dude, music. some people do. Yeah. Like I saw um, Papa Roach perform. Yeah. And I'm not going to lie. I'm not a big fan. I didn't listen to him really. Like I did Tony Hawk era, whatever. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> And I don't hate their music, but it just was not the music I listened to. Right. And then I interviewed Bryson Roach, who's like the um, creative director for the band. He's the younger brother of uh, Jacoby, the singer. Oh, yeah. And so when they came through, I interviewed him in L.A., but when they came through, um, oh, Marina Del Rey. That's the place in California. Oh, yeah, yeah, Just click because he came down to the beach and we did the interview. Um, But when they came through Milwaukee and they played, he invited me to the show. So I came out and I watched it and I was like. Dude, dude sounds like it, his voice is exactly the same as it is on like the track, but it's so much better. Yeah. Just seeing it live happening. Yeah. You know what I mean? It hitting the place in your brain where you're expecting it to hit live. Yeah. It's so cool. Well, cause a lot of people don't sound anything like it yeah. and they like try to like make up for it yeah. by like really being showman, but their voice doesn't match it. Cause yeah. obviously they're putting things over or whatever. I mean, granted Papa Rudd's been playing 25 years or whatever, so they should be locked in by now, <laughs> but like live, that was a band that I was like, damn dude, that made me want to want to go to more shows. You moved out to LA and you got to work with uh, a bunch of different people. How much of your time right now is spent into putting out your own music by yourself versus how much is put into producing for other people? Um, Yeah, I kind of took a step away from producing for other people this last maybe year or two. How come? I feel like the rap world was kind of just like killing my soul. (laughs) (laughs) Because of subject matter or why? Not subject matter. It's just like the environment isn't yeah. good for my mental health you yeah know it's kind of toxic sometimes there's a lot of like i don't want to say there's a t- well there is a lot of ego okay i'll just say there, there is a lot yeah. of ego not same, that same with the electronic world though too but sure. it is like a little different yeah sure. but there's not there's just not that much that's like really talking about like cool shit like i interviewed dessa not long ago oh, and cool. like she has like a real direction yeah. to all the songs that i'm not saying i listen to a lot of rap music so i'm not trying to like knock rap mu- rap music entirely but generally yeah, it's more surface type stuff that is being talked about yeah so it kind of limits what you're creating to a certain degree is that kind of the reason why Was yeah it you wanted to go deeper into other subjects and stuff and have more meaning i think i just it so this, is, this is gonna sound kind of dumb but i um kind of just like do and make whatever i'm feeling in the moment and i just wasn't feeling it you know it just wasn't inspiring me that's that's not to say I wouldn't like to produce for others in the future. I definitely would like to k- get back into that world. I just had to do it for myself for yeah. a little bit. Yeah. No, I don't think that's dumb at all, dude. One of my favorite quotes, and I bring it up all the time, is I interviewed um, Ian Allison, who's a, a bass guitarist from Minneapolis, who's a session guitarist, plays with a bunch of people, and he's mm-hmm. just a, a he's the man. If you don't know him, you should know him. Best dude. But in it, um, the advice he had given is he said that he lives his life based on what gives him the feeling of, oh cool man yeah no that's exactly it whatever is exciting to him in that moment he said it always leads to money anyways yeah no for real that's when you make your best stuff yeah when when you're not trying too hard you know what you mean when Mm -hmm. you're not trying to make a product that'll make you money is when you're going to actually make something that makes you money (laughs) sure sure so what what serve or like what's the benefit of you still living in la if you're now for the most part just making stuff by yourself you don't have to be surrounded by a million people you could live in minneapolis and just send the tracks and then have zoom calls with these people what keeps you living there i mean i so i work with a lot of producers i do a lot of like collaborative producer type stuff okay um just not a lot of like producing for vocalists yeah and i have a lot of good friends out there that i enjoy working with um somni i share a spot with Harris Cole, just all the guys on Friends of Friends. 
yeah with me um what kind of stuff do you create with them and what's your role within that we also kind of just vibe it out man <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. yeah yeah we just kind of like see where it goes we're we're all kind of in the same mental headspace where we don't like overthinking it too much yeah you just want to make cool shit yeah do you sit down with like sound boards and like have a jam session <laughs> like what does it really look like yeah we'll like b- both play guitar at the same time or something and try to come up with something or there's a bunch of instruments at the studio there's like a drum kit everything you could imagine really <laughs> sure so that makes it pretty nice we can just kind of like jam on something for a little bit until we find something that we like and kind of approach it from there sure so how come you keep like if you look up your name in general social media if you look up your name interviews wise this is the first long form interview you've been around forever was there a specific reason why you kept pretty underground like you really haven't pushed your name to the front you've made a lot of this stuff but you've been relatively quiet about it is there a reason for that or no I'm just kind of shy. I think. <laughs> you need a PR agent. Yeah, right. I need oh, somebody okay. to. <laughs> yeah, I. I don't know. I struggle with my self-esteem a little bit. Okay. And you know what I mean. It's fucking. It feels a little weird just talking about myself for for, for an hour, but it's it's good. It's like it's a good exercise. Yeah. You know what I mean. Yeah. Well, I, my brother-in-law said something like, "People like to like things that other people like." And if you don't like what you do and people don't know you like it, they're not going to like it. Yeah. Right. If yeah. that, if that made any sense, yeah, it's yeah. like you have to be a fan of your work in the first place, which you should be, yeah. you know, it's not a like egotistical thing. It's just, if you're putting it out, I would assume you like it. That's yeah. the point. Yeah. Right? You have to like, right. It. So you like it and then you tell people about it cause you like it and you think they'll like it. Then somebody else does. And then it snowballs. Yeah. Right. But it's hard if you don't promote it. You know, because yeah. even the biggest art- artists in the world, if they don't promote, their albums don't do well. There's a reason yeah. they have PR teams. It's yeah. not exclusively about creating good stuff. Like, and it's not exclusively about going on tour and playing shows. If people don't know you're there, how are they going to discover it in the first place? Right. You know what I mean? Right, Thankfully, right. like you haven't had to play headlining shows forever because you've been yeah. working with other people. So there's like different avenues and everything to that. But I think it's a good step. Yeah. To to do this type of thing, not exclusively this show, but in general, this type of thing, that's what's going to expose more people to discover the music that they will like yeah. if they just knew it existed in the first place. Yeah. This, this last year, I've been trying to get out of my own way in the sense of like, I'm singing now, you know what I mean? I got to like <laughs> not be afraid to talk about myself, <laughs> yeah. you know? Yeah. Well, and it's hard because there's like, so it's it's a i think there's a bad analogy people say um there's a fine line between cockiness and confidence i totally disagree that's not true yeah because your idea of cockiness versus my idea of cockiness that's not one line yeah right my idea is way over here right yours is way over there right so no matter what spot that you pick some people are going to think you're cocky and some people are going to think you're confident. Yeah. There isn't a, a fine line at all. That's true. That's true. It's <laughs> so a pretty broad line. Actually. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. So it's kind of like, a well, if you're going to try to be at the point of modesty where no one's ever going to think you're cocky, people are just aren't going to hear about it at all. Yeah. So like no matter what, there's going to be people that think that, you know what I mean? And like, I'm pretty obviously I do something verbally on the, you know, on the internet and on the radio and stuff. So I talk about myself a lot and I'm sure there's a lot of people that think that I'm an egotistical jerk, even though the basis of what I do is talk about other people's lives. (laughs) Yeah, right. But still I end up talking about myself a lot because it's just kind of part of it. But anyways, it's a good thing to be doing that. What do you think has been your biggest mistake in your career that you've been overcome that you either have overcome or you're still trying to overcome? I started releasing too soon. I think oh, okay. my earliest stuff was just not good. I, I was just so excited to be making it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, but that, did that give you the momentum to continue to create? No, it took a couple of years to like get people on board. Sure. Cause it really, it sucks, dude. Yeah, okay. <laughs> it's, it wasn't good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think though you kind of have to make bad stuff. Cause that like, yeah. I could have just not released it. Well, that's though. what I'm saying. Yeah. It's like that again, it's fine line. No, there's a, there's a spectrum there, but it's like, I remember reading this book and I've brought it up too many times, so I'll keep it brief. Um, the four agreements. Have you heard of that book? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. In that book, one of the agreements is to always do your best, no matter the situation, understanding that your best isn't going to be the best that it will be in the future. Yeah. It's the best in that moment, you know? So just, as long as you put out the best that you can in that moment, because so many people wait and they think they can't put anything out until it's incredible. Mm. But 
it's going to take them 10 times longer to get to that skill level because they don't put anything out. That's the, yeah, that's the other side of the coin. Yeah. You know, do you hoard it until it's perfect or do you kind of like let go of it and let it be its own thing? Yeah. You know, which is not going to be perfect. Yeah. You know, even if you wait until you think it's perfect two years down the line, when you're better, you're going to look at it and go, that was trash. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like there's a, I think there's a balance there, but I do think that people need to be a lot more patient than they currently are. Yeah, absolutely. A lot of people, they want to, I mean, look at do people make an Instagram account for something that doesn't even exist. What do you mean? Like they'll make a, a label or they'll make whatever oh. <laughs> and they'll create, like I get holding the name. I get that. Yeah. But you don't need a post. Yeah, I know. Right? And then they're like posting images of like coming soon on this thing. They haven't even made. Yeah. You need a product if you're going to yeah, promote like, something. What are you even doing? <laughs> yeah. But so many people do that. You know, with yeah. the, what worked for the show. And this is my advice to other people. Like if you want to do a podcast or whatever. I did a 10 episode season first. Yeah. Like 10 episodes where everyone's from a different industry, edited the whole thing. During that time frame, ended up getting mics, re-recording the first two episodes so they were better. After I was done editing the whole thing, gave myself a month to market and promote the thing. And then by the time the first episode came out, it wasn't horrible. I'm not going to say it was great, but it wasn't horrible because I had that time frame that I was working on this thing. So by the time I actually put it out, I was confident in what I was putting out. And then it did get better from there, but I I had a strategy. And that's me saying like, that's three months of working on something, right. not years. Right. But like, don't put out something you made that night. Oh yeah. You're going to be stoked on it that night. Yeah. And in a week, you're going to realize things you wish you would have changed. Yeah. And those people that you are going to beg to listen to you for the first time, aren't going to listen to you more than one time now. Yeah. Right. Because you just put out kind of garbage. Yep. yep. Yeah. I when know. were you finally <laughs> like stoked on what you started putting out? Was there like... Because when we talk about putting up bad music, a lot of times it's like the imposter syndrome thing of like, you you just don't think you're good or whatever. And eventually you kind of realize, wait, I am pretty good. Like, is there a time frame that that kind of came to? I think about 2019, 2020 is when I started to really like, f- at least feel like if I wanted to make something, I kind of had an idea how to like how to hit that specific sound Yeah. where it wasn't like me, like struggling and researching how to do something. I could just like kind of shit it out (laughs) yeah sure yeah 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 i mean having the confidence to do one thing and i keep saying a lot of the same quotes but successful people don't think of if they can do something they just think of how they're going to do it yeah right exactly and the tools and resources are there now to do literally anything at all yeah i just fixed my toilet the other day yeah like i don't know how to do that (laughs) and i was like well i'm not gonna pay like 200 dollars for somebody to come in and do something that takes five minutes yeah so i watched youtube videos on how to replace all the internal like the clapper and all the dumb little things and like i'm hopefully i never do that again yeah (laughs) you know what i mean but it's just like taking the mentality of like well i can if you just have the the idea of like well there isn't an option i'm just going to yeah you know what i mean you're going to be able to figure it out i think in life it's pretty important to yeah not not view obstacles, not view things as obstacles as much as opportunities to learn how to get around them. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, like you said, there's always a possibility or a solution for for basically anything. You just have to figure out how to do it. And v- v- viewing it as impossible doesn't do anything other than hurt you, you know? Yeah. It just makes it impossible. Yeah. If you think it's impossible, it's now impossible. Yeah. If you think it's, it is possible, it is possible. What was the last thing that would have been an obstacle, but you thought of it as an opportunity and how did you attack it? It's a good question. Um, singing, honestly, I know I just yeah, keep okay. talking about it, but I was, I was pretty hesitant because not only am I not a good singer, but I thought my lyrics were dumb for a long time mm-hmm. and it just like, you know what I mean? I want people to be interested by the way I'm saying things. Yeah. You know what I mean? I don't want to just, ooh, I'm so sad, blah, blah. <laughs> like, yeah. that's not going to provoke anything in anybody. Yeah. There's a reason there's people that make full on livings just writing the songs and not singing it. Yeah. Like, that is a, that itself is an art for sure. Yeah. So even if you have something you want to say, doesn't mean you can do it well. Yeah, Think right. how many times people try to write a book and never put it out or yeah. how many books people put out before it's good. Yeah. How many poems or whatever, right? right. It like takes a while to develop that. So would you say that's like the biggest thing that you're currently still working on is songwriting? Um, I'm so all over the place, man. I'm taking a little break from songwriting. So I feel like I have something to say again oh, in, okay. the, in the future. You know, yeah. I'm kind of like, 
marinating in my own emotions right now. <laughs> sure. So where is all your time and energy going besides traveling, touring? But is it like trying to lay all the instrumentals down for a skeleton of what this next thing could be? Or like where where is your time going to as far as creating? I have a batch of songwriter type songs that are close to cl close to done. Okay. It's like maybe 10 songs that are 80% done. Yeah. But I'm taking a little break away from those to get back into like some instrumental type stuff, some dancey like four, 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 four on the floor kind of stuff um I'm just trying to follow what inspires me in the moment and what feels like the best thing you know i don't want to make a, a complete pivot to be like the folk guy right you know what i mean i want to be, be authentic as much you don't want to be the andre 3000 of flute playing all yeah of a sudden. right <laughs> yeah no i mean if he's having fun dude like by all means have fun but like that's a, a total change but when you're trying to do stuff that's more in the moment what's feeling good it's hard for that feeling to last long enough to create an album and put it out right? yeah so, I, I tend to work pretty fast for that reason I oh, can, do you? I can how long did that last album take you it took about a year but I would get a pretty good framework of each song after maybe like a day Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay, yeah, that is quick. I, I, yeah, I would get it laid down and kind of fine-tune it for a couple months. If somebody really wanted to have you help produce one of their songs, what does it take for you to do that these days? You said you're generally trying to just avoid that. Yeah. But if somebody, because there's probably, a, I'm sure there are a lot, but if what would it take for somebody to reach out and say, I just like, I love your sound. I have this thing. It's awesome, but it needs you. What would it take? I mean, granted, I'm available if they're a good fit and it's something I want to do. You know what I mean? How do they reach out? And how do they pitch it? How do you want to be pitched? Do they have to send the song initially? Do they have to sing into their iPhone? Do they send an email to your manager? Like, what's really the way to go? Set up a FaceTime or something, you know? Sick. Just like, let's shoot the shit for a little bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's always nice, if nothing else, just to network with people, to be yeah. able to say, oh, you're doing this cool thing. Even if I'm not the right person, maybe I know the right person. Right. And I'm excited to see what comes out because maybe I'm the right person for something else when the timing does line up. Right. I always ask this question on every show, which I mentioned to you earlier, so hopefully you've had time to think about it. When you do things that you're passionate about for a living, you get to have really unique experiences that usually aren't financially driven. They're just like really dope for whatever reason. Can you share a story of an experience you're really grateful for, but it only happened because you pursued music? Yeah. Um, so I've been listening to this guy, Gold Panda, forever. He was probably one of the first three producers I got really excited about. Um, I, I didn't even listen to electronic stuff at all before like my senior year, like zero. And he was probably one of the first few I got super into. And um, this year I saw he announced his first tour back in the U.S. and like... 10 years and I am just such a huge fan I reached out to his m m management and all the venues yeah. at every single venue we, we sent an email out to like hey can I open this show <laughs> yeah. and it works man I, I, I joined him on a good handful and he's like my homie now it's, it's, it's very it's very cool it was awesome seeing him play a lot of the songs I grew up listening to over yeah. the years uh, every night it was it felt pretty surreal honestly yeah well and having someone you look up to respect what you do is like super super meaningful yeah absolutely like i've gotten to interview a lot of people that i'm a fan of now and every time i don't want to say it gives me the chills but it is kind of like a whoa dude like this is wild yeah you know what i mean yeah, just absolutely. because it's like i didn't when i started doing this that wasn't something that i was thinking was ever going to be in the realm right. like I had a vision of what I was going to do and I expected to be successful in what I was doing but I didn't even really consider that it could lead me to interviewing people that I'm a fan of yeah absolutely you know what I mean absolutely. I, got a, I got a DM the other day from um um Greg Lutzka dude he's if you don't know who Greg Lutzka is he was the most famous skateboarder from Wisconsin ever by oh, a whoa. wide margin whoa. like huge dude he was in like the old video games he did all the X games and all that type of stuff mm -hmm. he's sponsored by like Harley and all oh, these wow. huge brands he's in Walmart like dude's oh my God. massive yeah and yeah I, I was just DMing him a couple days ago and he's like yeah you gotta come out to, uh, uh, to what's bar is he in ocean something whatever wherever he's from um in california he's like you can come out we can record at the house and i can hook you up with tj rogers and ryan desenzo and all these other pro Whoa. skateboarders that he like skates with nice dude and i was talking to my partner mary and i was like i feel like i need to like i wasn't planning on going back to la honestly in probably a while 
but I feel like I have to go. You should. Because like the 14 year old me, if I would have won a trip to go hang out with pro skateboarders for a week, like yeah. in their homes and kick it. You would do it. <laughs> oh my God, I would do it. Yeah. You know what I mean? And now like those types of doors are open and it yeah. wasn't the intent, right. but they're there and it's yeah. like, whoa, dude. I feel like you, you got to chase those opportunities to like gratify the young, younger version of you. you yeah. Know what I mean? Yeah. No, I definitely think so. Anything that gives you that, that feeling again of like, cool yeah means i need to be able to do that so hopefully i can make it out to the show i don't i got a lot of stuff going on but i do want to see a set absolutely and i've been meaning to get down to a braxis so yeah absolutely. i'm gonna try to at least pop out briefly cool. for this cool give the people one more time where can they go find you what platforms what do they search out and more importantly if they are absolutely in love with your music or you personally or both how can they support <laughs> you after this um shrimp nose pretty easy to find on every streaming service ever <laughs> yeah. um got some music videos got some merch on my band camp come to the shows um just hope you like listening to the music honestly if, if you get something meaningful out of it that's that's good enough by me hell yeah and because you don't do it enough for yourself social media Go oh. hit his Instagram, Shrimp Nose. Hit the follow. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. And after you listen to a music that you really like, send him a DM, not saying, hey, but saying, I listened to this. It meant a lot to me. I really enjoyed it. When creators get messages like that, it's so much more meaningful than a random $20 order on the internet. Not yeah. saying don't order something, do order something, but do, do both. Please. Yeah, do both. <laughs> but like a message like that really like, it makes my whole day when I get a message from somebody saying, I listened to this episode and I was inspired. Yeah, no, so absolutely. Like, take the time to go do that. And everyone be very appreciative. You can find me, Passion Pod, everywhere. It's, search it, listen to it on the radio. Find it on YouTube. That's the new platform that I'm pushing. TikTok and Instagram is the main one. Yeah. So Passion Pod, you can find me there. Um, and look out for the new album, which is called... As It Seems. Go listen to it right now. Thank you for joining us for this episode of The Passion Pod. We hope you enjoyed it as much as we did. We'll see you soon. <laughs>